up y'all that is a tune called off she goes and i was looking around for good beginner whistle tunes figuring maybe there's a few that i haven't hit yet and this one came up as one that is often recommended as a first tin whistle tune and it occurred to me that i've never actually played it before uh, until i ran across it and figured i ought to do it for a video i'm sure i've heard it it's it's probably come up a time or two but it's just not a regular thing in the sessions that i go to so i never played it before and it's one of those that i probably ought to have under my belt so i figured as well, we'll see what we can churn out for a video. It is a really good beginner tune. It's a nice tune in D, and it's got a nice lift to it, so you can work on some good tonguing, some good note separation, and try to get that good jig kind of groove into it, which is what we're going to cover in this lesson. Right, A part. So here we go. Run that section again here. section repeats, just the end is a little bit different. Once more for good measure. Cool, I'm going to run the A part all the way through nice and slow, see if you can follow along. go. Did you get it? Hope so. Here's the B part. Jumps mostly in the second octave, but the ending is going to be repeat. So if you've got that nice and strong in the A part, it should come in handy. So here's the B part. A lot of notes there. I'll run that again. It's kind of weird in that that last little triad is really an A chord, an A major chord, which I think is kind of cool in a D tune whenever that happens. That's just sort of a nice little change in the tune. So here's the second half. We'll finish up the B part. Starts the same. So the first half of that second part of the B part if that makes sense, is the same as the first half. It's a repeat. The last half of that chunk of the B part is the same as the last half of the A part. Run the whole thing, the whole B part, hopefully you get it all. Ornaments-wise, because it's got that nice little slow, long note, short note bit, it's fairly tailor-made for short rolls, I think, when you land on those notes. Going back to the A part, so... You've got those good, strong first beats of each little phrase there. Kind of already sets that jig tempo, sets that pace, so you can accent those with a couple of nice short rolls. As I hit that A, I do that little popping thing. That's sort of an optional one. Nothing else there to get up to that top D except tonguing. I usually do separate each of those notes. Again, just really selling that jig groove, hopefully. Now, the bottom Ds there, I've demonstrated this a few times. As I go from the F sharp to the D, popping that F sharp finger off. Every time I do it. I don't do it every time I play the tune, but sometimes I'll go back to back just to, to punch up that phrase a little bit, and then maybe I'll leave it off the next time. But that's how I'm doing that. Nice and slow. Then finishing it up. Just 
short roll in the beginning again on the high F sharp. I'll cut that G, um, just the highest note. I tend to accent that sometimes, it just sounds kind of neat. Now, as you're going to the E, there's a few different things you could do, a few different things that I like to do. Simplest would be just a single grace note. Gives a little bit of that bubbly kind of sound on the E. Or you do two grace notes. And in my case, I'm doing these two fingers in that order. Just depends how much of that bubbly effect you want. B part has a similar effect where it's got that long note, short note sort of vibe. Typically we play it where it's all a series of eighth notes. Alternatively, you could carry over that same long note, short note thing, accompanied by short rolls. That's sort of a variation that you may or may not want to dive into super early. Once you get the basic melody, it's kind of a cool way to change it up, I think. Otherwise, you could cut that G. Otherwise, I would just be tonguing those sort of arpeggios, the way the melody would be written originally. You could slide into it. Or, as you come back down, that's another option, so as you hit that, uh, coming from the G to the F sharp. And then as I go transition into that A major chord that I talked about, I do like to pop that E with a, with a, a crossing noise, sort of a tap. So as I'm going from F sharp to E, I'm really hitting a D first, but just for a split second. Nice and slow would be that way. Single tap on the A, Feels kind of nice and light and delicate. I like how that sounds. Could do a full roll on that G rather than doing jumping all the way up to the B, especially if your ears are getting a little tired of those high notes. A little bit more mellow. Finish the phrase the same way as I do in the A part. Nice and staccato, nice and, um, I don't know, has with that jig groove in it that I keep preaching about. That's my game plan for this tune. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, let me know if y'all play this one. Is it common where you're at? It's, again, not very common for me, and I was glad to have run across it and had a reason to work on it. So let me know what y'all think. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.